Hello. In this session, we're going to be talking about signed integer representations. Thus far, we've only talked about representing positive numbers. Here, we're going to talk about representing negative numbers. Positional number arithmetic is used in base 2 and base 10. In our base 10 number system, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division is done by column. So here's an example of a base 10 subtraction. In this, there is a signed magnitude representation of our numbers. The bottom number is negative. It's represented by the minus sign in, uh, in front of the number. However, subtraction, using a signed magnitude representation, requires a complex algorithm, even for humans. We have to be able to borrow from one column and add to another column. <clears throat> the same is true in a base 2 representation. Here we have two base 2 numbers that we want to subtract. Again, this is signed magnitude. In this column, again, we have to be able to borrow. In order to subtract 1 from 0, we have to borrow from a previous column. And this complicates our CPU hardware, which we don't want to do. So how do we represent negative numbers? Well, in simple binary, we assume that all numbers are positive. And so here we have two representations of numbers, 66 and 194. And notice that these numbers only differ in the most significant bit, that is, the one on the leftmost side. The problem is, is that when we use a simple binary representation, we can't represent negative numbers. And so one way of fixing this problem is to use a signed magnitude representation. In a signed magnitude representation, we use that most significant bit to encode whether or not the number is positive or negative. A 0 represents a positive number, and a 1 represents a negative number. So notice that these two numbers, just like on the previous slide, only differ in that most significant bit. But we interpret the second number as negative 66 instead of 192. The problem that we have with this kind of a representation is, is that it requires additional hardware in the CPU to perform the, the subtraction. Also, this number here, 1 followed by all zeros, is actually a negative 0. And so that's a problem. We're wasting a number and it complicates our hardware. Another way of representing this is to use binary coded decimal. In binary coded decimal, we represent each decimal digit as a 4-bit quantity. And so uh, 1, 2, 3 in base 10 becomes all zeros, and then all zeros in a 1, and then 1, 0, and then 1, 1. And the negative number, then, we just encode the minus sign using 1, 0, 1, 0. So this is both a sign magnitude, but it's also a base 10 representation. Forcing a computer to work in base 10 is much, much more difficult and requires complex CPU hardware, which we want to avoid. So the real solution is to use 2's complement arithmetic. In 2's complement, we use an encoding such that in a fixed width field, we can represent the numbers from negative 2 to the n minus 1 through 2 to the n minus 1 minus 1 for an n bit number. Okay? And so subtraction in this representation is merely the addition of a negative number. So that's going to unify addition and subtraction in our CPU and simplify the hardware. So here's a table of codes on the left. Uh, each of these codes is then interpreted as either simple binary, sign magnitude, or two's complement in the remaining columns. Notice that all of these are the same through the number 7. But when we get to the representation of 100, what we find in the simple representation is that this is the number 8. In the sign magnitude, this is negative 0, but in 2's complement, it's negative 8. Notice in 2's complement that there is no representation of negative 0, so it fixes that problem. In, uh, in addition to that, it simplifies the hardware by unifying addition and subtraction. So let's look at an example. If I try and add 2 and negative 5 in 2's complement, I write out the representation of 2 as 0, 0, 1, 0, and the representation of negative 5 as 1, 0, 1, 1. And I can add these together by column, and what I get is 1, 1, 0, 1, which is the representation of negative 3. So this is very convenient, and CPU uh, developers really like this. The unification of addition and subtraction really simplifies the hardware. So how do we go about constructing a number in 2's complement? The first step is to form the simple binary equivalent of that number. Then we XOR every single bit. We flip all the bits. We exchange zeros for ones and ones for zeros. Then we add one to the resulting number, and that forms the 2's complement representation. So let's look at an example. Construct a 2's complement representation for negative 24,856 in 16-bit 2's complement. 
we start by forming the simple binary representation of positive 24,856. So here's that encoding. We then flip all the bits. We exchange zeros for ones and ones for zeros to form the next intermediate step. We then add one to that flipped representation, and with the carries, we get this representation. And so this number represents negative 24,856 in two's complement. In summary, computers use positional arithmetic in base 2 just like we use positional arithmetic in base 10. The choices in representing negative numbers include a sign magnitude representation, but that has a problem with negative 0, binary coded decimal, which has a problem of trying to represent a base 10 number, force a base 2 computer to work in base 10, and 2's complement, which solves both of those problems. So in that, we can, set, we can unify subtraction and addition within the CPU hardware using 2's complement.